Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm George, and today I'm here on Praia do Lazaro in Ubatuba in Brazil. And we're going to paint this scene behind me. Some of these mountains up in the distance, and some people playing on the beach as well. Remember, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, and let's start painting. I'm painting on an oil primed linen canvas that I've taped to a plywood panel. Today I'm painting straight onto the white ground of the canvas. And for those of you who've been following my channel, I know this isn't the usual way that I start a painting, as I typically apply a toned underlayer to my canvas known as an imprimatura. However, there can be some advantages to painting on a white ground, as it will help prevent you from painting your scene too dark, as dark paint will appear extra dark in relation to the white ground. Also, you have the ability to paint thinly over the white surface to give your colors a light glow, like when working with watercolour. Using thin down raw umber paint, I start by sketching in the main lines of the composition, which are created by the shapes of the mountains and the sea. Here I'm painting the sky above the distant mountain. The sky immediately above this is lighter and a bit warmer in colour temperature than the sky higher up. So I'm using a colour mix of titanium white, cobalt blue and a small touch of cadmium yellow and carmine red to warm this section up. Notice how as I apply this colour mix onto the white canvas, the colour appears dark due to the contrast against the white ground. However, as I paint the other colours, the true value of the colours will appear more clearly. For the sky higher up, I use a mix of titanium white, cobalt blue and a touch of ultramarine blue. Using vertical brush strokes, I blend the colours between the transitions as I paint, but I'm not fiddling with these brush strokes too much, as I want to leave some clear brushwork and brush strokes in the sky, which will mix optically as you step back from the painting. As the sky reaches the top of my canvas, I also add a touch more ultramarine blue to my colour mix to make a deeper blue. Here I'm painting in the large silhouette of this mountain in the background. Due to atmospheric perspective, this mountain has a greyish blue hue and is quite light in tonal value compared to the hills in front of it. Also, as this is far away, the contrasts in tonal value within this section are going to be minimal. So it has an almost flat appearance with some subtle shifts in colour temperature and a very slight gradation in value, being lighter lower down and gradually getting a bit darker as it gets closer to the sky. I'm now painting in the shadows within the masses of trees. To do this I'm using pure ultramarine blue and it's not often the case that you can use paint straight out of the tube without having to mix it with any other colours on your palette first. But in this instance, this colour is the perfect value and hue to represent these shadows in the distance. And now using a colour mix of yellow ochre, emerald green which is similar to a viridian green and a touch of titanium white and a very small touch of cadmium red and painting in the light areas of the trees on the hills. So if you're curious about Uber Tuba, this region that I'm painting in here, what does it mean? What's its history? Well, it's actually quite interesting. So Uber Tuba is a word or rather a combination of two words from the Tupinamba language, which is an indigenous language, which was widely spoken in Brazil before it was colonized by Portugal. And this language was spoken all the way from the north coast of Brazil, right down to the southern coast of Brazil. So basically, all along Brazil's coast, this was the most spoken indigenous language. So the word Uba means both canoe or river cane, which was a type of tall grass used by indigenous people to make arrows. And Tuba means gathering place. And a lot of the surrounding towns also end in Tuba. And historians believe that it's more likely that the name means place to gather river cane, 
rather than canoes because the use of uber, meaning canoe, appears later on in history. And the indigenous people of Ubatuba were some of the first people in the Americas to come into contact with the Portuguese and sadly suffer the consequences of colonialism, with many of them being forced into slavery, working on sugar plantations. And there was some resistance to this with the local population making an alliance with the French who controlled Rio de Janeiro at the time, which is just a bit further up the coast from here. However, the French and indigenous people were defeated by the Portuguese and the Portuguese kept control of Ubatuba as well as taking Rio de Janeiro too. And the first ever peace treaty in the Americas was signed between the indigenous inhabitants of Ubatuba and the Portuguese in 1563, keeping Brazil in Portuguese hands with only one language, the Portuguese language, and one faith, the Catholic faith. But in spite of this, many of the descendants of the Tupinamba people still live here in Ubatuba, and there are even indigenous reserves here where the original language and traditions still lives on today. To paint the sand I'm using a colour mix of titanium white, yellow ochre, raw umber and a small touch of cadmium red and cobalt blue to make a warm grey. When painting sand I'd say do be careful not to paint the sand too yellow or too orange as this is quite a common mistake and over the years of painting sand I've came to notice that the chroma is usually quite muted and often this yellow orange hue is optically enhanced by the contrast between the blue sea, which is a complementary color of orange. So when seen side by side, each color appears a bit more vibrant. As I mass in the sea with this blue color mix, I'm leaving a few patches for the whites of the crashing waves and for the shiny brown reflections in the wet sand. As it's easier to paint clean color mixes onto blank sections of the canvas, rather than trying to layer on top of wet areas of paint, especially when working a la prima like this, so I'm trying to paint a finished painting in one go. So I don't really have time to leave areas to dry and then layer on top. Here I'm painting some figures into the scene and as this beach is actually very crowded I'm just picking and choosing a few people to add in, using the people that I see as loose references and inspiration rather than trying to copy each person exactly as everybody is moving around a bit too fast for me to do this. And I'm being careful in my placement of these figures as I want their positions to contribute to the overall composition of my painting. So I've basically built my composition around an S-curve which leads the viewer's eyes from the foreground through the painting to the background. The curve runs along the seashore from the bottom left of the canvas and then up into these forest covered hills in the midground, and then back along the top of the mountain behind them. So I've decided to paint these figures facing along this S-curve with their walking gesture helping lead the viewer's eyes through the painting.
Here I'm just adding a small boat into the scene, which I feel adds some more visual interest to the midsection of the painting. So I finished the painting and I'm now going to have a swim in this beautiful Brazilian sea on an incredibly hot, sunny day in Ubatuba. and refreshing. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram at George Frederick Thomas, where I post my most recent paintings. Until next time.